Hey there everyone, uh, making my latest video here for a machine that's going to be posted onto Craigslist. And uh, one of the early machines years back when I first started my hobby of restoring uh, domestic sewing machines, <clears throat> I actually uh, started looking at what some of the machines that quilters like. Those were sort of the first machines I was drawn to. And the machine you see here was one of those. And uh, I've restored quite a few of these in the past, but it has been almost two years since I restored my last one. There are a lot of great vintage sewing machines. Uh, you'll see a number of brands that I, I love to restore. I've restored almost 30, over, well over 30 brands and models, but uh, uh, I love vintage singers. I love vintage white rotaries and the Kenmore rotaries that were made uh, under, under the Kenmore label. And I also, uh, I love Italian neckies. You know, you, you've seen me uh, make videos for a lot of these machines. Uh, one of the most collectible, and I would argue probably the most collectible machine from the vintage era is this one right here. You're seeing it. It is called the Singer 221, uh, and it is also called the Featherweight, or the 221 Featherweight. And uh, it's, it's a great example to point to because a lot of times people will advertise things as rare. And the Singer Company made this machine in a few different versions, but mostly the one you see here in a black version, for from the 1930s up until about late 50s, early 60s. That's a very long production run. And so these machines, the reason, one of the reasons they are priced the way they are is, first of all, they are amazing. But so are some of the other machines that I, that I love to restore. But these are very collectible. So they're not rare. They weren't made in small numbers. They were made in big numbers. But if you think of comparing this to something like a 1957 Chevy or a uh, 55 T-Bird, those were not, you know, rare production models. But they were just very popular. What's one of the things that really separates this machine? And I'm, some of this information is for those of you who may not uh, who may be new to the whole idea of a featherweight. Most vintage sewing machines sit in tables and then some of them come in carrying cases. The ones that sit in tables do so because they are pretty darn heavy. They're made of amazing quality steel. So getting a machine from the vintage era that is portable, and I mean reasonably portable, is tough. There aren't that many out there. The Singer featherweight set the standard for portability because it only weighs about 14 pounds. The way Singer did that was, of course, the inside, all of the drivetrain and the gears is all incredibly high quality, high strength steel. But the body and the chassis were made from aluminum and that combined with the small size makes for, a, I mean, you can literally pick this up and take it with you. And it's one of the only machines. I do have a white rotary that was made with a magnesium body and chassis. In fact, I think I still have it on Craigslist, and it's sort of a green color. Now, that machine weighs about 17 pounds, so a little heavier than this, but still, you have alternatives if you're looking at featherweights and wondered what else is out there that's portable. But for the most part, you don't have a lot of easily portable vintage sewing machines. Uh, I think that is part of what draws people to this machine. Some people love it for its aesthetics. Um, and it's remarkable in that even though it's very small and very lightweight, it is, it is wonderfully engineered in a way that makes it, you know, there's not a lot of wiggling or vibration in this machine. It's almost like a little watch, a little finely made watch. Um, again, like most of the great machines from this era, uh, certainly in the Singer line, it has a rotary style shuttle hook and it has both <coughs> stitch length control, I'm, hopefully you guys can see me wiggling this over here, and then of course it has back tacking or reverse. It has a light and it has tension control here on the front and it has a bobbin winder. And uh, you'll see on the photos on my posting on Craigslist, uh, I made a very long list of the things I did to restore this machine. Uh, so if you go into eBay and sometimes Craigslist, depending on where you live, you will see Singer Featherweights. You're, you know, it's not unusual to see them for sale. And they are some of the more higher priced of the machines. But you want to be careful because many of these machines have never been serviced. It will say clean or machine runs, seems to sew okay. But many of these machines have gone a lifetime without a full tune-up and overhaul. So that's one of the things I do. There are a few other people in this part of the country that do this. It's a hobby. Uh, I just love to see machines uh, gone through fully. And, I, and again, the list of what I've done, uh, I've gone through every system on the machine um, and adjusted and cleaned as needed. And, and I'll make that list there. I'm not going to talk about that in the video. But what I did want to do was to demonstrate and let you guys see it run. Uh, the machine is amazing. By the way, it will be listed 
in an unusual way. Normally, when I have a carrying case um, or a table with any sewing machine, they simply get included. But because of the popularity of this machine, some of the I, I anticipate getting hearing from people who either already have a machine and want the table or vice versa. So I'm going to list this machine for sale with the table at one price, but I'll also I'll sell them separately. Uh, and this, this table, which is interesting, uh, is very unusual to find it in this condition, but this table was made specially for the Singer Featherweight. It's the only machine that it fits, which is one of the reasons the table is rare, particularly in the condition that I, that I got it in. So um, it seems to have survived a very long time. And uh, the beauty of this, of course, is that uh, this machine comes with its original Singer carrying case. And, but I'm sure that at some point people went to Singer and said, you know, I've got a case, but I really would like a table. But this was for people maybe who, you know, had very little storage space. So you'd put the machine away in its case, you'd put it in the closet or somewhere. And then this table is a card style table. So it, the legs fold up and you can easily store it. So uh, today they're very coveted. Uh, any of you who know the featherweight know that this table is really useful to have. It gives a wonderful work service. Um, I have another one similar to this, but it, it's, it's designed to fit the Singer 301. And for those of you who are looking at featherweights or just learning about them, the Singer 301 has the same featherweight sewing system. It's just, but it's a different machine, different motor. So I'm going to start with uh, some fabric to show you guys how she sews. And I'm going to start with just two layers. This is a lightweight muslin. And we'll begin with a uh, long straight stitch. And of course, do back tacking. And I will pick this up in a moment and show all of you the actual stitches that it's making. I'm going to reduce the stitch length and let it make a, that wonderful fine short stitch that Singer, Singer Rotaries particularly, a lot of singers are known for this, but the Rotaries especially. Let's pull this up. I'll let you guys see the stitches it's producing. I've got fairly good light in here. I'm in the sunroom today. And you'll see, see if I can get the light to shine on my stitches. Stitches from a single rotary are incredibly fine. And this is the other side. And that was two layers. I'm going to add another couple and I'll keep going up uh, to show you that the machine, of course, can handle certainly more than two layers. It's a very strong motor machine. You can sew a number of fabrics a lot of people have. Uh, personally, I think this machine excels at garment weight fabrics. Uh, the, it has a strong motor, but it is really amazing with its fine stitching, and that's, that's what I often uh, would use a featherweight for. And again, your primary adjustments on this machine will be uh, thread tension on the dial here, and then of course you also have, uh, you can adjust the, the, the pressure on the presser bar, which affects the amount of pressure that your foot is pushing down with and you'll make those adjustments based on uh, the weight of the fabric you've got. Now one of the things I'm going to do here you'll see me sort of freehand driving. This machine you can do free motion embroidery with. Uh, singers of this type are interesting because their feed dogs are narrow enough that you can do this. The machines that have wider feed dogs don't really um, uh, they don't really let you sort of freehand drive the way I just did there. And so now I'm going to show you guys, this was my freehand area, and that's with four layers of muslin. And again, uh, singers uh, from this era, uh, particularly the rotary singers, will let you do this. This is a vertical featherweight bobbin machine, and it's particularly friendly to uh, free motion work. A lot of people who quilt Love it for that reason. Well, for a number of reasons. You can also take it on quiltings with you. 
So that was four layers. I'm gonna just add another two. I pre-cut some, sl some slices here of muslin for you folks to see. So we'll do six layers. This particular featherweight, I need to look up the serial number so I can tell you guys the year it was made, but this particular featherweight um, has the, mar um, excuse me, the uh, seam guide markings already built into the uh, needle plate, so you don't need to use tape. Some people unfortunately have put tape on old machines before, but uh, I never recommend putting tape on a machine, but they were trying to use it as a guide. You can also buy, for those of you who have machines without that, you can buy little decals that will go right onto the plate, but this one has it built in, so. So if any of you are working on large pieces and you want to be able to spread out, a table like this is really nice for that. Uh, any sewing table is, really, but I'll show you guys. Now you can see the stitch quality, and this again is with I believe, and then you'll see on this side. Let's see if I can, I'm trying to get this to focus in the light there. Sort of a cloudy day today, so I want you guys to be able to see. And so I had, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this was six. I'll put two more in and we'll have eight layers of muslin. So again, the, the machine is not a lightweight, even though it doesn't weigh much, um, but it loves, uh, light to medium weight woven fabrics is its forte. You could certainly do, uh, you can actually sew knits with this if you use the right needle and short stitches. Um, you could do that. You could actually sew a t-shirt with this machine easily. Now you'll notice <clears throat> when you get up to something like eight layers, right, I have a size 14 Oregon brand needle, very high quality needle. What I'm going to want to do here in this situation is I'm going to come down and start with my needle in the fabric. Uh, sometimes you'll do that with garment leather or any thick fabric. When it comes to attachments, you'll see all sorts of, you know, different feet that were made for this machine. Um, so again, I'm doing eight layers of... Uh, lightweight muslin fabric here. I would say if we if we squished it down, we'd have probably mm, more than an eighth of an inch, probably uh, three sixteenths of an inch of fabric. But as you can see, the machine uh, she she doesn't mind at all. You know, you see the sort of a green thread on the other side here. Really nice uh, tension control. You know, the stitch is legendary Singer rotary stitch. Now this fabric is. Um, Let's see, just checking my time left. I tend to be real talkative in these videos. This is a heavier, I'd say a medium weight. This was a drapery fabric, two layers. I'm gonna run this through just so you guys can see that it likes something other than muslin. And this is dark blue. We'll see how it, how it does with, uh, I've got black thread on one side. It just went over a pretty thick seam there. And so it's not afraid of that either. Let's see if I can get this to show up. Actually, you may just actually be able to see those seams. I know that's a black thread. Sorry about that. This side will show up much better. You'll see the uh, sort of a sage green color. Just beautiful seams here. Um, again, those of you who know the featherweight, you're very aware of why they're popular and you may have one. I have sold them to people who collect them who have more than one. Um, but if you're new to it, uh, you want something portable or you just want a nice working surface, uh, contact me through the Craigslist post and uh, I'll answer any questions and we can set up a time for you to come and take a look. You can sew on it, you can bring your own fabrics or certainly use some of mine. Thanks for watching folks.